Hi, in this and next couple of videos, I want to illustrate the standard strategy. The standard strategy is an example, a paradigm of how we approach problem solving in physics. And what it exemplifies is how we take a given situation, break it down, apply laws of physics as we know them, in order to get an equation which we then use to solve the problem. So let me first lay out the strategy. This applies specifically for forces problems. You draw a free body diagram, which is the graphical tool we use in force problems to lay out all the information we have so that we don't forget anything and we approach the problem systematically. And part of that systematic approach is we define a coordinate axis. And there are some guidelines to follow in how we draw that axis. We'll go over that. And once you have the coordinate axis defined, those axes were defined for a purpose. It's so that we can break forces down into components. And all these steps are really leading up to the final step in the strategy which is the Newton's second law equation. And usually when you get to this point, you haven't finished solving the problem. What you have done is you have set up an equation which then can be algebraically solved for whatever the question is. So there are some mathematical steps to be done. All right, let's uh, apply this strategy to this question on the screen. This is one of your homework questions, and it's a relatively simple question, so we'll actually be doing it the long way by applying the standard strategy, but I want you to illustrate it in this context first. So let's uh, start with the first step. The first step is to draw a free body diagram, and the purpose of the free body diagram is to lay out all the information that's given so that we can be sure we didn't forget anything and leave us with a graphic which shows all the information given in the problem in one glance. This is the most important step. If we identify the wrong force somehow or if we forget to identify a force then the rest of our steps will be wrong. So. Even though it looks like just uh, drawing a picture, it, it is the most important step in the standard strategy. So let's identify all the forces. There are some easy ones. The problem gave us two forces. One applied force of magnitude F and another applied force of the same magnitude but applied at an angle, 30 degrees. And the problem doesn't explicitly give these other forces. And for this question, we, you can actually ignore them too. But let's draw them for the sake of illustrating the standard the strategy. So on this block, there will be a gravitational force, which we'll call weight. And it'll end up being equal to mass times gravitational acceleration. And as drawn here, it looks like the block should be accelerating downward, and we know it doesn't. So there must be another force that we haven't identified yet, and that's the normal force. All right, so as drawn here, it looks like the block should be accelerating to the right. And that is right. The question is asking for the resulting acceleration of the block. All right, so what direction do you think this block will accelerate? It seems like a silly question because in this particular question, it's rather obvious it'll be accelerating to the right. But I ask that question anyway because this is important information for the next step, defining the axis. Whenever possible, we want to define the axis so that one of the axes is along the direction of acceleration. It's not a requirement, but it will make our future steps much simpler and more convenient. You will see soon. So let me define the axis so that the x-axis 
is along the direction of acceleration. Then the y-axis is perpendicular to that and in this case happens to be along the normal force and gravity. Alright, the next step is to, to break forces into components. Fortunately, three of our forces are already along x or y-axis. That would be one of the applied forces, the normal force, and the gravity, they are all already along x or y direction. The reason we break forces into components is to prepare for the next step, step number four, where the Newton's second law equation gets written each time for each direction, once for x direction and once for y direction. This is consistent with the mathematical behavior of vectors, the independence of x and y directions. So we have one force that needs to be broken into components, and that's this other applied force F. And let me do that here. We have the Y component and the X component. And while we are doing that, we want to um, come up with uh, their expression too. So this theta is the 30 degree angle that's shown there. So we see that the Y component should be F sine theta, we use a socatoa. This side here is the side opposite to the angle, so it's associated with sine. And the x component here is f cosine theta. Sort of what you would have expected. You could have guessed this, but next week you will see the situations where if you automatically associate x with the cosine, and why the sign that you will be sometimes wrong. So you want to get into the habit of always drawing these triangles. All right, so that's step number three. So all these steps one through three are really leading up to the final step, step number four. Once you have correctly drawn the free body diagram and marked it up and labeled it correctly following steps two and three, then all you need to do is in step number four is simply read off the information from this well-drawn diagram. So let me do that. So we are writing down Newton's second law equation. And what you should do always remember about these vector equations is that they are really two or three, if you are in three dimensions, two equations disguised as one because what it really means is that the x component of the net force is equal to mass times the x component of acceleration and that the y component of net force is equal to mass times the y component of acceleration. And this is where you will see why we chose acceleration to point only along the x direction with no component in the y direction. This way, we can say that the net force in the y direction adds up to zero. This isn't always possible, but whenever you can set up your equations this way, this simplifies your work a lot. And this is what the problem hint is getting at if you need to look at forces along both components. If you don't want to do all this extra work, you could just look at the forces along the x direction and that would give you the answer you are looking for. All right, let's uh, finish step number four. So the net force in the x direction, that would be one of the applied forces, the whole thing, and the x component of the second applied force. And I guess that's it. Both the normal force and gravity are not along the x direction at all. So F plus F cosine theta is equal to mass times, and here it is the whole acceleration because the whole acceleration is along the x direction. So that's our first equation. And we do have second equation that we can write down. For this question, it doesn't give us any information that we are looking for, but let me write it down anyway for the sake of completeness. So the net force along the y direction involves the normal force, the gravity, and the y component of one of the applied forces. So 
saying that the normal force is in the positive direction minus mg and I guess y component of f is also downward so minus f sine theta and by the choice of our axis this is equal to zero so this is the end of the standard strategy and note that it doesn't quite finish solving the problem for you what it does leave you with is a system of equations so I have two equations if I only have two unknowns then this is solvable let's count the unknowns force is known theta is known mass is known what is not known is the acceleration let me use capital M consistently all right so that's one equation one unknown and in the second equation everything is known except for the normal force so if the question were to ask you for the normal force then we would have needed the second equation as well as the equation one so let's answer this question first and then we'll see what the second equation gives us even though the question isn't asking us so the question asks for the acceleration so what we should do is solve equation one for acceleration a and see what we get I get acceleration is equal to f plus f cosine theta divided by m and if you plug in the numbers given in this problem you will get 5.9 meters per second squared the unit of Newton divided by kilogram gives you meters per second squared back so that's the answer and we are actually done there for the purpose of this question you don't need to bother with the y-axis but let me finish this up so that I can say one thing I want you to say so solving the second equation for the normal force n this is what you get n is equal to mg plus f sine theta and this is what I want you to point out sometimes in this class people get into habit of saying that normal force is equal to mg because that is true in a lot of the cases but I want you to realize that that is not the general rule the general rule for normal force is normal force and forces acceleration parallel to the surface by not allowing the objects to dig into the surface so if in order to satisfy that condition if the normal force needs to be greater than mg or sometimes smaller than mg then that's what it will be so um, you can plug in the numbers here to find the normal force but since it didn't ask let's not all right i have a couple more examples for you so until then bye